This is part two of solving rational equations. So we're solving equations containing fractions, and remember, a fraction is undefined if zero is in the denominator. So here's an example. 2x over x plus 2 minus 5 equals 7x over x plus 2. Now in the first video, I said there were at least two ways you could do this problem. One way is to simply multiply all the terms on both sides of the equation by x plus 2. Another way is to make all the denominators the same and then make the numerators equal. Okay, now in this particular problem, notice that in two terms you've got the same denominator, so I'm going to make a suggestion. When that happens, what you could do is sort of combine those two terms together. So if I subtract 2x over x plus 2 to both sides of the equation, I'll really only have negative 5 equals something. The other thing I want you to pay attention to is to the denominator. Remember the denominator cannot equal 0. So if you look at the denominators that we have, there's only one type of denominator, x plus 2. Keep in mind that x plus 2 cannot equal 0. So x cannot equal negative 2. So you solve it like an equation, but instead of writing equal, you're going to write not equal. It's a slash through an equal sign. So you want it keep note of this because if in the end you get that x equals negative 2, you know it can't be true because we know x can't be negative 2. Alright, so I'm going to use this technique of subtracting 2x over x plus 2 to both sides of the equation. If I do that, I'll get a negative 5 equals, now I'm going to subtract 2x over x plus 2 to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to show that step just to make sure everybody sees it. So that I get negative 5 equals, now I've got a common denominator, so I could just subtract the numerator, so that's 5x. All right. So now at this point, we can multiply both sides by the least common denominator. There is only one denominator, and that's x plus 2, right? The least common denominator is x plus 2. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation times x plus 2. So if I multiply this side, the left side, by x plus 2, nothing will cancel because there wasn't a fraction to begin with. And on the right side, I want to multiply by x plus 2. As well. Alright, so what do I have on the left side of the equation? Well, I'm just going to do my distributive property. Negative 5 times x is negative 5x. Negative 5 times 2 is going to be minus 10. Now what happens on the right hand side? You multiply by x plus 2 so it would cancel with that denominator. So all I have is 5x. Alright, now notice I have a negative 5x on the left side of the equation and a positive 5x on the right hand side. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides. This should be the easy part, solving the rest of it. The hardest part is eliminating the fractions. Okay, so what do we have on the left side? Negative 10 equals 10x, and then we'll just divide both sides by the coefficient, which is 10, and that gives me negative 1 equals x, which we usually write as x equals negative 1, correct? Now, Let's go back up to the beginning. We said x can't be negative 2. Okay, great. I didn't get negative 2. So now we're going to hope that this really is the correct solution. So we're going to have to check x equals negative 1 in the original equation. So we're going to check x equals negative 1 in the original equation right here. All right, so I'm just going to work on one side, then the other side. So we have 2 times negative 1 over negative 1 plus 2. I'm plugging in negative 1 for x, right? I'm replacing x with negative 1. And then I need to simplify the fraction. So the numerator is negative 2, and the denominator is 1. And then negative 2 divided by 1 is negative 2. So I have negative 2 minus 5. So the left side of the equation simplifies to negative 7. Now we have to plug in negative 1 in for x 
over here on the right hand side. So 7 times negative 1 and we've got negative 1 plus 2 in the denominator. So let's see, the numerator is negative 7 and the denominator is 1 and negative 7 divided by 1 is negative 7. Great, so when I plugged in negative 1, both sides of the equation were the same number, negative 7. So the answer to this problem is negative 1. It checks. This is a similar problem. Why don't you try putting the video on pause and see if you can solve it. Okay, we're back. Now, you can solve this in more than one way, just like most of these problems. In the last problem, I subtracted like one of the fractions from both sides, so I had the fraction on both sides of the equation. I'm going to do it differently here, just so you can see what it would look like if I didn't do that first. So how about if I just look at the denominators and I decide what the least common denominator is and it's x minus 3, so I'm going to write all the fractions with x minus 3 in the denominator or multiply everything by x minus 3. Both of those will accomplish the same goal. So I'm going to multiply each term by x minus 3. So I'm going to have 2 times x minus 3, right? So I'm multiplying all the terms on each side of the equation by x minus 3. So I need to multiply this other term by x minus 3. And on the right hand side of the equation I have to multiply that term by x minus 3. So I'm multiplying all the terms by x minus 3. It's an equation and that's the multiplication property of equality. Alright, so let's see. On the left here, 2 times x minus 3, nothing cancels, so I just do the distributive property, 2x minus 6 plus, all right, now, remember why we multiply by the least common denominator, it was so these, that fraction would be eliminated and this fraction will be eliminated, so I end up with plus 3 equals x. All right, so I have 2x minus 3 equals x and to finish solving, I'm going to subtract x from both sides and add 3. So you should get x equals 3. All right, now, I skipped something I shouldn't have, the very first step. If I look at the denominator, remember the denominator cannot be 0. And what's the denominator? It's x minus 3. So just keep in mind, x minus 3 cannot equal 0, so x cannot equal 3. Uh-oh, look, I just solved a problem and I got that x equals 3. We have a contradiction right here. So this is not going to check. Now, let's say you hadn't written this x not equal to 3. For instance, I forgot to write that. That's exactly why you check your work. You would have found the, the, um, that problem when you checked it. So if you were to check it into 2 plus 3 over x minus 3 equals x over x minus 3, if you plugged in, okay, so this is what you got. You thought that might be the answer, right? If you plug in 3 for x, look what happens. You get 2 plus 3 over 0, and this is a problem. Forget that. That's undefined. You can't have 3 over 0. So right away, you know, there's, it doesn't even matter what the other side equals. You can go ahead and try it over here, and you would have to cross it out as well. In fact, when you wrote Oops, I meant to put in 3. You would have 3 over 0 over on that side too. It, on both sides of the equation we have a problem. But if you have a 0 in the denominator anywhere when you check it, it's simply not a solution. So this is not a solution. You get to cross it off. And so you could write there's no solution. Okay. Or a common way is to simply write braces with nothing in it. Or you can put, it looks like a 0 with this line through it at a diagonal, that means the null set. That means there's no solution. So in this particular problem, there is no solution. All right, so this original problem, 2 plus 3 over x minus 3 equals x over x minus 3. Now, let's check something out here. Look at the original problem. Let's say I subtracted 3 over x minus 3 from both sides to begin with. So on the right hand side I would get x minus 3, right, because I have a common denominator over x minus 3. And you know what? What's x minus 3 over x minus 3? Well, that cancels. 
you can't get equals 2 equals 1. So right here there's a problem. And you could stop right there and say no solution as well. So sometimes when you do this first, you see there's a problem right off the bat. The upshot is, anytime you solve any equation, you should always check your solutions, right? But especially check solutions to rational equations. Because, and when you check, if replacing the variable with the solution makes one or more denominators equal to zero, it is not a solution. So beware, be careful, always check.